Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Thief 2, The Metal Age, Game Thoughts. I will start with just some thoughts on the story itself. I really like that this, you know, this whole coup thing of, of Mosley's, that first she pays Garrett to frame Lieutenant Hagen so that she will be next in line to be in charge because we, you know, as we read when we weave ourselves, yeah, when, when we're in the police station, we can tell that Truer trusts Hagen more, in part because he's so aggressive against the pagans, and Mosley, he's worried about maybe having to let go because she does not seem that keen on taking care of the pagans. And even then, you're like, oh, she's working with the pagans, and then she straight up has Truer murdered. And, you know, I mean, the guy deserves it. He's a horrible, yeah, horrible person. And, yeah, they have a pagan do it, of course. You know, some, a shadowy th beast that then disappears out through the window. I'm not certain what exactly pagan creature that was. I, I imagine it was probably some form taken by one of her lieutenants, you know, when Victoria, she speaks to, I think, at least two other, you know, pagan officers, I guess. I'm thinking it was one of those who had, like, a form that, yeah. And, yeah, then she's in charge, and she's not going to, you know, fight the pagans. And I like that after that point, really, the whole thing with the police thing is... Is no longer really dealt with because it doesn't need to be, and it's not, it's not that Garrett wanted, you know, the pagans to be, you know, let off the, the hook, that they shouldn't be that, you know, harshly dealt with, it's just, you know, he's paid off, you know, there's that thing in the briefing, you know, I was about to ask him how he found out where I live, when he found a way to distract me, you know, with the big bag of gold coins, you know, because, yeah, mostly, I mean, she's a lieutenant in the police station. She probably earns a quite nice amount, and she definitely wants the pagans out of, you know, out of trouble. So, yeah, and then she has someone else kill Truard when you're just on your way to interrogate him. And, yeah, with with that, you know, the last we see of mostly is when you, you know, follow the, you know, she drops the letter, and you read the letter, drop it again, follow the the pagan, you know, scout, spy kind of thing, back to Victoria. And I quite like the the uneasy alliance between Garrett and Victoria, where Garrett, you know, he gets infuriated when he finds out that she knew about Markham's Isle, for example, and, yeah, this, you know, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. You know, they, they both have to get rid of, you know, Truard and the Mechanists, and that's really it. The, it's, it's not that they don't particularly have common interests. I mean, she practically kills him right after they meet again, you know, in the, in the woods. She's like, you know, you can see the, the green tail and, and the, yeah. It's, it's, it's a very good way to, to follow up on the first, which, like I say in the in the review, I really they must have planned this because Victoria did disappear near the end of the first. I think I even said that in the video on that that I figured you know I imagined she might be coming back and yeah she's of course now the leader with the other one gone and yeah it's it's a great it it really highlights how in this world it's not trust, it's not that people get together and agree. This is not, this world is not a democracy. The world in, 
in these Thief games is not, I'm, I'm not commenting on the third one, I know it's made by, I think it was, like, Ion, or, you know, the, the, not Ion, right? Yeah, anyway, the people who also made Deus Ex, I believe, something like that. I haven't played it yet, I haven't read anything about it yet, I'm just focusing on the ones I've already played. But yeah, it's, it's very much, the world they present here is very much a world where you just, you get by. It's not democracy, it's not that you're sure you have certain rights, no, no, no. It's just, you, you work with who you can work with to, you know, to deal with things and yeah, to, to really make that very personal, because again, like I said in the, in the, in the review video, the first one very much built up the world, and it's not that much about Garrett and his involvement in the plot. This one is very much about his involvement in the plot, and here we do have this, you know, that's, that's one of the personal, you know, relationships that were you know, there to follow up on, and yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, he didn't take what he did regarding the pagans wasn't about anything other than personal interest in the first, and now personal interest dictates something else. But it's still not, you know, they, they don't trust each other. You know, there's that line about, you know, I sure hope that your relationship with the, you know, your personal relationship that he mentions, with, you know, the, the security in, you know, what was it? I don't remember. The, the, the collector dude, when you gotta go for the, the masks, the, you know, servant robot masks. You know, she's like, you know, I sure hope that it's familiar enough that, you know, that you'll get what we need. You know, she's like taunting him, and he's like, it's not the most dangerous thing I've had to work with, and, and it's just right there, you can tell he's saying she is easily the most dangerous, or, you know, maybe he's referring to the first one that, that he's worked with, you know, and, and she's like, do I have to ask what the most dangerous is? It's just, I love their banter. It's, it's just, you can tell these people want to strangle each other, you know, it's... <laughs> It's not a happy reunion, exactly. Now, I I did think that it was interesting that Garrett again was used without you know his knowledge. Someone someone hires him to do something, and it turns out that there was more going on than he knew. I suppose that you know there there are only so many stories you can do with. A, a thief as as the you know and he he has no yeah a, a thief is the protagonist who has no you know there's there's nothing other than just his his personal interest you know I I suppose it's in the realm of possibility to do a story of redemption but I really would rather not see that because Garrett is Garrett and on that actually they kind of soften him a little bit in this don't they I mean in the first one he literally you know yeah without spoiling anything the first one but in the first one he's like faced with someone who's dying and he's you know and they owe him something and he's like you're lucky that you're already dying because you know you owe me and this is you know yeah, and in this, I mean, when he finds that agent, the pagan agent on Markham's Isle, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I, I did for him what I could, and this whole thing, you know, and he actually, I think, you know, when, when the guy says something, you know, Garrett, yes, my friend, and he's like, what is this, I mean, you know, and, and then you have the choice, I think you have the choice, you know, kill him or not, I, I killed him, I'm, you know, very much, you know, you you have a right to die if if you find that it's just yeah, but anyway, the yeah that just didn't seem and and then you know at the end of the game he's like Victoria no where I'm like okay the the Garrett of the first one would have been Victoria you idiot now we're not gonna win you know he's 
Yeah, so so that, but and also, I feel like near the end, you know, the bit where he's like, no, this plan is suicide. I'm not going, and then he finds out. I think from a keeper that he's, you know, that she went for a full-on assault to, you know, to make sure that there was enough, you know, nature in there that the rust gas, yeah, that 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 would work, you know, and. I don't know, I, yeah, I get that they, they needed that to basically happen or something like that. It, I don't know, maybe this is part of where the, the story was retrofitted to work with what they wanted to do in the levels, and they really wanted there to be all this wood, you know, stuff, which I like, you know, she left a bunch of goodies around, all, all of them nature-based, you know, for, for you to pick up, but, yeah, so, I don't know, it just didn't, it, it felt a little like, I mean, he, he might almost as well have agreed to her plan at, with, you know, what it, if, if he had gone away and then when he came back he had something specific that he felt he needed, that would make sense, but yeah. So the, I, I quite like the whole thing with, with Karis. You know, we have this exploration of the danger of a one-leader religion. Because really, the Builder was, you know, in, in both the Builders, the deity that they, you know, praise. But in the first one, it was very much, well, the Builder has said this, and that goes. And in this, you know, we find out that Karis is rewriting ancient Hamorite texts. And through that, we find this, you know... It turns out that his plan is to kill everyone in the city because he hates nature so much, you know. And yeah, it's it's this thing of when when one person is in charge and they can't be called into question because again, not a democracy. This world does not have the the city does not have any checks and balance to make sure that the one leader does not do exactly what he wants to do. And there's, there's also near the end we, we can read, I think it's in the last level, we can read that, you know, one of the, you know, one of the followers, you know, was, was concerned with Karis because he, he heard him, you know, and he only sent out a robot. He still doesn't leave that room, you know. He sends out a robot and it, it you know, the voice comes from that. And he noticed that several times Karis used the, the terms of the Builder and Father Karis as interchangeable. Yes, Father Karis, I'm sure he refers to himself in the third person, let's be honest. And, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. What, you know, if no one is there to, to remind you, you know, was that thing of, you know, a slave has to whisper into the ear of Caesar, remember that you will die. Memento mori. Yes, I, I'm pretentious. It's, it's deal with it. And and yes, so you have this. Yeah, he doesn't. No one, no one pulls him back from the edge. And the the thing, you know, yeah, he hates nature. He hates. He even hates humans. He he sees himself as the builder, and he. Like, like I said in the review, basically the mechanists want to bring the afterlife to Earth, where the, the Hammerites very much felt that the afterlife was something that had to be earned with discipline, which is also why a lot of people left there and became mechanists. Here, you know, the mechanists have more fun because they get to build and, you know, yeah, things change. And it's it's kind of... You know, when, when there is a great shift in, in society, some people are going to want to follow, to, to approach these new opportunities, to, to go down new venues. And some people are going to say, no, we have to keep to the old ways. And that's kind of what we have here. It's, it's kind of conservatives and progressives. And again, I'm not, you know... I'm not, and the game is not, saying that either is right or wrong. There are pros and cons to both. If we just throw ourselves at the, you know, the new frontier, things might go really bad. We might get ourselves killed. 
But if we always stick with the old ways, then that might also cause some pain that could be avoided. You know, medication is something that we humans created. Before that, you know, you could die from, you know, you could die from your teeth going, going bad. You know, we, before we had toothbrushes and dentists pulling out teeth, you know, that, yeah. So, so yeah, if, if the, but, but yeah, he, he hates nature and people, so he's even willing to destroy his own followers. It's, it's mentioned early on that, you know, that I think it's, yeah, it's when you have to listen in on the meeting between Truus and Karis, Truus and Karis, and you, you can literally overhear someone, you know, one of, one of the soldiers say, you know, honestly, I think, I think these robots are a little creepy, I, I don't know, I just, you know, and, and the other one is, you know, chides them and says, do you really think that you are, you know, worth more than a robot to the builder? With your, you know, vulnerable flesh, and, you know, you, you'll only live so and so long, something like that, and, you know, and, and the other soldier accepts that and goes off, and then, you know, the, the other soldier is like, what a fool, maybe I should tell Karis, or so, something like that, you know. And, yeah, that's literally it, because a robot is more effective than a human being at a lot of things. So, if, if you don't see an intrinsic value to a human being, which, of course, you know, at least in the best, ca best cases, is what a democracy does, then yes, why not just build these robots? And yeah, he's even willing to sacrifice his own followers with, you know, he sends them on this seminar out away from Soulforge, Soulforge being the only place that's still safe. And, you know, that of course ends up being his demise because he makes it completely, you know, yeah, sealed, you know, airtight. And so, once, yeah, <laughs> so that's kind of, I, I did wonder a little when I completed the, the last level, really just, you know, you open the door and then you go out. I, I just figured that maybe you'd have to go out through some air duct or something, but yeah, I, I realized after that, you know, when you see the cutscene after you leave the door, then the, the airlock kind of thing comes down, but, but yeah. You know, and you, and you, in fact, you read several accounts of people who've been sent to the seminar, several mechanists. So, yeah, that's, that's quite nicely done. Now, the... I quite like that this... Yes, I, I already mentioned, you know, he's, he stays in this one chamber for a lot of, you know, I'm not 100% sure for how much of the game, but certainly he wasn't there when he, you know, when, when you go in to, to, to find him or something like that. No, wait, not find him, sorry. You just, yeah, you, you're there to find his, you know, some details on the, the Cetus project and this kind of thing. He's not even there and he left a track for you, so even at that time, you know, presumably he's watching feeds from the cameras, and this is again, you know, police state, so, yeah, it's, you know, basically everyone can be watched now, because you have all these robots with, with cameras, and, and actual cameras set up, so, yeah, nothing, nothing is particularly secret anymore, and Karis is just sitting there watching these feeds, I, I can imagine at least, and he, he becomes more and more paranoid because he sees what happens when people don't know they're being watched and he he realizes, which is of course true, that we human beings are very vulnerable compared to robots again. So yeah, if, if you don't see the intrinsic value. And yeah, that's that's where it ends up. He he's he's kept himself isolated and yeah, to, to that point, and, and of course this one leader kind of thing, it also has the, the power corrupts, and 
you know, ultimate power crooks. I think I messed up, messed that up slightly, but you know what I'm getting at. And this thing of you have a, you know, they they keep building, they keep discovering new ground. Eventually, you build a weapon, and this is this is what history has proven. You know, the 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 A bomb is one thing, and just yeah, in general, you know, sooner or later, and it's like, well, we have to do it before they do. Or maybe you think, well, it's only going to be used for defense. Or maybe you don't even have ethical qualms. Maybe you're just sure that you should have this powerful weapon. And once he has built the weapon, he becomes obsessed with its... I mean, you know, you, you read... I think that's around the... It's maybe around the time of the submarine. Once you've, once you've traveled, you know, hidden in the submarine, and you get to the, the lost city, you know, you find yourself, you know, you find this book that he left behind, although the pages somehow aren't entirely smeared because it's underwater, and you can read that, you know, he studies the rust over and over and just ponders, you know, and yeah, this, it, it's, it's sick in a way, he's, he's, He's becoming obsessed with the ability to destroy people, and rust, rust is of the builder, because the builder is of machines, or rather machines are of the builder, so it must be a good thing then. And yeah, he's going to decimate the city, he's going to render it all rust, and there will be no life left. He's, yeah, it's, it's... It's very con convincing and very credible that this is the kind of thing that, you know, would happen. Now, and like the first, you know, Garrett stops a catastrophe which has been set up over some, you know, over a couple of levels before that. Which, again, it's, it's great to have this very satisfying conclusion, and it's still stealth. You know, you're not, you know, you're, you're performing sabotage in that last level, but you're not, you know, going in guns blazing or anything. In fact, if you do, you probably get yourself killed, because there are so many freaking robots in the last level. And, yeah, even, even with all the water hours you can find, you're still in trouble if you just attack everything that you... I really like also that you can craft weaponry in that last level, you know, mines, and, yeah, just various, that's, that's really cool. Now, it, it, of course, also goes into that devout followers can do awful things, you know, if, if they don't question what is going on, and again, this is where we have the Hamrites versus the Mechanists, the Mechanists is always changing, and they just believe what Kara says is good, because he, he preaches the Builder's Word, after all, where the religion was very unchanging with the hammers. And, in fact, if someone like Father Karras had come along, they probably would have killed him very brutally, made an example out of him. And so, yes, of course, the, the hammers also did awful things, but they, they kept up the balance, you might say. You know, they didn't go beyond any kind of thing that, yeah, they, they didn't go beyond a certain point. Now, and another thing is, of course, that that which you can build with your own two hands is more malleable than people, and again, less vulnerable, and so on and so forth, and we find out that he can control the, you know, the robots quite easily, you know, he has an entire channel that he can speak to them at any point. I really like that you can come basically face to face with him. You you can't get into the room with him, but if you walk up to the glass, he'll see you and he'll talk to you. Like, you know, you know, over the, the loudspeakers, you know, ah Garrett, I see thee That's really creepy. And he can also see you through the cameras, which yeah, that's, that's where I realized that basically 
you know, yeah, he's been watching feeds, at least of Soul Forge, at the very least. But, but yeah, that which is built, you can more easily control. And in the last level, we do genuinely see, you know, it's, it's pretty much empty of people. I'm not sure, maybe some of the guards were actually people, but I think most of the ones I saw were the servant robots, just, you know, and, and there was actually this thing of, that you can read that you know the the one of the followers were was like what could we humans possibly do that one of your robots can't do and and Karis is like do what I say which is again you know he's he's egomaniacal he's he's completely in charge and he wants to be completely in charge and then he you know realizes oh wait and then it kind of ends there so that's where he realized that well I can have servant robots to you know, be guards here, because then, I mean, if his plan, if his plan to work, I guess there'd be no one left alive, at least in the city, and, you know, basically the entire, I mean, it's unclear if there are, you know, like, completely other places in this world, but I think there are, I think, yeah, there's, there's mention of, like, smuggling in spices from somewhere else, so, you know, there might be society somewhere else, but certainly all of the city, you know, and I'm not certain if the city is, like, is they part, part of the city, or is that like, you know, port town nearby, the city? anyway, the entire, let's say it's an island, the entire island would, you know, have no life left at all, other than Karis, and yeah, it's, you know, so, so yeah, literally, that last level, it's devoid of human life, other than, and in fact, living life form, other than, you know, what's left of the, you know, of Victoria, you have the, you know, Garrett, and then you have Karis, and that's it, that's, that's ultimately what he wants, no life, Karis, you know, and, and that's where, you know, if, maybe if you were like, ah, could the mechanist be so bad, you know, and then you see that final level, it is sends a chill down your spine, because there is no life, there are, there are robots of different kinds, the, those spider ones were really creepy, at first I was like, oh, it's kind of like the ones from System Shock 2, and they're not quite as creepy, but they have the little face of the, 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 Helios face, I guess it might actually be like Harris's face, but I'm I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm, I'm still going with it. it. It looks to me like the, the face of Helios carved in marble. But but yeah, and the way they, they move and the whole thing, yeah. I still maybe say that the System Shock 2 ones are creepier overall, but these are still really, really creepy, and it, I think it's cool that they threw a bunch of stuff like this at you for the very final level. You know, you've got the spiders, you've got sentries that don't need cameras to, you know, there's that explanation, well, there's so much power here at Soul Force, so we can, you know, we can at least deploy them here, and you have to go to, well, you can go through the turret factory, you know, you don't have to, because you only have to light, you know, like five of, or change the thing. I went there, it was really exciting, and deadly, and difficult, but fun. But, but yeah, basically, what you have in that last one, I think it's what is referred to as the singularity. Machines building machines. There's not a human in sight. And everything is done on, you know, you have these conveyor belts and these large machines. I mean, there, there are some mentions of, well, you know, you put the materials in one end and, you know, press a button, comes out the other. Karis could program the servant, you know, servant robots to do that. So, yeah, he's, he's effectively made the human race obsolete. And that was the entire idea of their religion to begin with, you might say. But the hammers couldn't quite accomplish it and once they, I mean, if, if the religion had come from the pagans not being very powerful, the religion would have been mechanism and not, 
you know, hammerite, or the order of the hammer. So, yeah, that's, it certainly is the mechanist's ultimate goal, and, yeah, if, it, it literally hammers home, if you don't stop this guy, if you don't accomplish this, this will be the world of, of Thief, at the very least. The, the, you know, he will just expand, he will send his robots out to build more, and everything will look like that. And heck, he might even be able to, you know, let's say there are more islands, more places in this world. He could probably conquer them. He's got robots, you know. Now, the... Let's see. I, I thought that there might be a trap when you return to the collector guy. I was a little surprised that there wasn't, but of course they bring in... Well, you know, you might say some traps, they have the, the poison gas in the floor, and, you know, robots, in addition to the, uh, yeah, so, I really love that they actually had you case the place, having to go around, and you at least gotta open the, the secret passage before you get back out, and if a guard knows you're there, you've lost, because you cannot get into any conflict with anyone, that's awesome, and some of the paths in literally require you to sneak right up behind one of the guards and pick the lock with him standing right, you know, you're standing back to back basically. That's, that's amazing. I, I, I love it. Now, the, I like that they brought back the lost city with, you know, the, the ancient technology of it, you know, and then these, the, the blue light things, you know, the, the proximity lights are used to a different effect this time, you know, they were, they were very cool in the first one, but now they, they're an additional obstacle and at times help for stealth. And, and the fact that there's also now cameras there, you know, instead of the supernatural beings that there were in the first one, is also really cool, and yeah, and you can very much see, you know, they built, you know, they built extra stuff stuff there, you know, and you can also see that very much with, you know, the, you know, the pirate stuff and this whole thing, yeah, which is where they have the, the submarine, the Cetus, I think, something like that, yeah, and yeah, it's, it's just, if you go near one of those blue lights, well, then you're lit up and the enemy can see you. You no longer have a shadow to hide in. But when an enemy goes near this blue light, they will highlight themselves. You know, you can see from afar, oh, there's a guard over there now. And once you've memorized their patrol paths, you can plan ahead and you can, you know, you don't have to be in a position where you can see the guard themselves. You can just tell, they just entered, they just left, you know. So, yeah, that's really cool. I suppose that more or less covers it. I did quite like that, you know, this whole thing of, you know, Karis hates the rich and is only willing to use them. This is again, you know, he, he comes to hate people, really. It, it spreads more and more, and, you know, the, the rich, he has to use them, he, you know, for, some for power, at the very least. He, you know, he trades with them, and, and such, because the hammers are no longer in charge. And you can see that there's this thing of, you know, one of the bank guys is furious whenever he has to talk to the, the mechanist guy, because he'll complain and say, well, you really should have put the camera there instead of there, and this whole thing. And the bank guy can't respond because they need them as a client. But at the same time, the bank don't have to do what the mechanists are saying because the mechanists are not the hammer. The hammer were in charge and the mechanists want to be in charge. And that is, you know, also part of why, you know, that's, that's part of why Karis works with Truard because otherwise Truard would be working against, you know, if, if Karis sent people out to try to, you know, abduct people, that's, that's so terrifying. And, and you read the thing, you know, there was like, what was it, that it was crying or see the eyes underneath, something like that. 
and and just the cyborg android has gah, it's just terrifying and and nightmarish and and awesome and you know, an awesome concept you know not wouldn't be awesome in, in real life obviously but yeah this this kind of thing that, that brings me into and you can even see when you when you first get you know when you have to snoop on the you know you have to overhear the meeting between Karis and Truer you see the place where they have people and they're putting these you know the the metal mask on top of them and this whole thing and you know you can't you can't stop it you can't prevent it but it's it's there, and then once you realize, oh, it really is, you know, and when you see that, you're like, are they seriously? Is this you know cyborg android kind of thing? And you don't know exactly what. And and the one thing that that's in there is also clearly not completely human, but not completely robot either. And and the voice is a little, you know, it it comes off a little synthetic or something like that, you know. Anyway, the. Yeah, that, that brings me nicely into the, the android kids. There are like two in this in this game when, when I'm going in to, f to discover that Karis, you know, yeah, the, the angel, angel watch, yeah. And then in the last level also, and in both cases, I don't seem to be able to get past him without being noticed. In, in I'm not sure I had to go past him in Soul Forge, but certainly, you know, certainly in Angel Watch. I also wanted to mention Soul Forge is as much a factory as it is a church, perhaps more, or church, cathedral. Anyway, yeah. And you have this, yeah, yeah, he just, he runs off and he doesn't actually send anyone your way, but you don't seem to be able to destroy him, and uh, yeah. Now, I thought that maybe Karis would turn out to be, or become, a machine himself, that he would, you know, basically, I don't know, turn up as part of one of his big fighting machines or something, but, you know, he's, he's there at the final level, you know, behind the class and, and all. And, and, you know, I started wondering, wait, did we actually, are we sure that Truett was in the same room as, as Karis? And, or maybe it just happened after, but, yeah. I really like that he actually knew I was coming when, uh, in Angel Watch. He set a trap, he, he had an alarm attached to, you know, the, the wall safe that I had to open to get the, the Cetus plans, you know, and get away. And... I really like that it was still fair. There, you know, the, the enemy still had to find where I was, and yeah, the the fact of and yeah, there there are some waiting for you when you you know on on the way back from there, but they also don't know you're there before you know. So if you sneak up on them, you can take them out like that. Now. And, and I quite like the, the detail of the plan that, you know, the rust gas could be sent out through the mask of the, of the servant robots. Now, I suppose that almost covers it. I like the, you know, when, you, you like the second level, you go to the you know, these warehouses. Remind me never to eat a Minel steak. They have rat meat and for at least some of it and there are spiders in the in the general vicinity of yeah, that's no thank you. But again I guess that, that really shows you that's you know I hope he's at least only you know, I hope he's not the only steak man in town, or if if it's really, but I suppose it could be that that's that's the meat you eat, especially when you know when nature is in retreat. I'm really not trying to rhyme this. It's it's just kind of kind of happening. 
I, you know, in the first level you have to rescue, you know, you have to get Genevieve out of there for, for Basso. Now, when, you, you know, once, I, I had knocked out everyone in the path between where Basso was and the actual, you know, yeah, and, and Genevieve's room. And certainly, you know, Basso, and, and to an extent also, and yeah, maybe even more so, Genevieve, certainly didn't seem that, you know, keen on being careful to get by. Maybe it was because I knocked out the guards, but, you know, Gerrit does tell us that Basso, for, for, you know, he is a thief, but he's, he's good with locks, but he... Yeah, you know, he doesn't he doesn't go in there himself. He's not he's not as sneaky as as Garrett is. So I guess from that we can gather that he's not that kind of thief. Please rate and comment and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.